Hi, this is Gordon Parker from Michigan Tech, and in this video I'll review Taylor series in two variables. First, let me just go over some notation. Let's say I have a function in two variables, f, uh, and the two variables are x and y. If I evaluate this function at x0, y0, like so, I'm going to denote that as f0. And if I had the partial of f with respect to x evaluated at x0 and y0, I'm going to denote that as the partial of f with respect to x evaluated at 0. And finally, if I had the partial of f with respect to y evaluated at x0, y0, I'll denote that as the partial of f with respect to y evaluated at 0, or x0, y0. So this is not saying I'm evaluating at 0, but I'm evaluating at x0, y0. It's a little bit sloppy, a little bit lazy, but um, it'll allow us to get through this a wee bit faster. OK, so let's dive in. If I have f and two variables, x and y, the Taylor series expansion is f0 evaluated at x0, y0, plus the partial of f with respect to x evaluated at x0, y0, times x minus x0, plus the partial of f with respect to y, evaluated at 0, y minus y0, plus 1 half the second partial of f with respect to x, again evaluated at x0, y0, times x minus x0 squared, plus 1 half the second partial of f with respect to y evaluated at x0, y0 times y minus y0 squared plus a cross term which is the second partial of f with respect to x and y evaluated at our old friend times x minus x0 and y minus y0 so that's out to two terms, or to second order terms. And then if I wanted to keep going, I would keep going to third order, etc. But the motivation of this talk is not to go out to higher order terms, but instead to linearize nonlinear functions about some operating point. And so if we're going to linearize, what we do is, is we lop off all of the terms that are of order 2 or greater. So that just keeps these three terms. So having introduced that, let's just do an example. Let's say that our function in two variables, x and y, is sine of x times cosine y. And let's linearize this about x0 equals pi over 3 and y0 equals pi over 4. So if I grind through the Taylor series expansion, well, I probably shouldn't use an equality. I'll say it's approximately equal to f at 0 plus the partial of f with respect to x evaluated at our nominal point. And finally, partial of f with respect to y evaluated at x0, y0 times the quantity y minus y0. So let's see, before I plug everything in, why don't I go ahead and just calculate the partial of f with respect to x. So that gives me cosine x, cosine y. And the partial of f with respect to y is equal to negative sine x sine y. Now I'm just about done. So fxy is approximately equal to sine x0 cosine y0. That's our first term right there. 
plus cosine x0 cosine y0 times x minus x0 that's that term plus minus sine x0 sine y0 times y minus y0 and I can plug in all the x zeros and y zeros and make that all happen but this is the final result. So now let's take a look at that in a uh, three-dimensional plot and see, try to visualize how good that approximation is if I deviate a little bit from x0, y0. And to do that, I'll use MATLAB. Okay, so I'm going to plot two functions. First, the nonlinear function sine x cosine y here, and then the approximation to it at the nominal point or the operating point x0, y0, shown there. So let's see. Um, if I look at x0, y0, pi over 3 is somewhere around 1, and uh, y0 is pi over 4, so that's 0.8-ish or so. So I'm going to plot this from negative uh, 1.5 to 1.5. So let me make a um, a grid to do that. So I'll say xxyy is equal to mesh grid negative 1.5. Eh, I'll use that. That's a fairly um, fine scale, 0 0.01. And now I'll go ahead and make my function. So I'll say f, this is going to be the nonlinear version, is equal to sine xx dot star cosine yy. And to plot that, before we go ahead and, and look at the linear version, let's just go ahead and plot that uh, mesh xx, yy, and f. There it is. What a beautiful looking thing. Um, it has some interesting features to it. Uh, this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis. So we're going to be looking at a point that's, let's see, about 1 and 0.75. It's going to be on the other side of this, so I'm going to rotate it just a little bit. It's going to be over here somewhere. Um, and we'll look at that in just a minute. So I'm going to close this out and make the linearized version next. I'll call that F1, and to do that, I'm going to have to implement this equation into MATLAB. And if I stare at it a minute, I look, I believe I can do that fairly easily. So I'm going to say x0 equals pi over 3, that's our uh, x0 point, and y0 is equal to pi over 4. And f1, that's my linear version, is, and I'll try to make it look just like it does in the page next door, sine x0 times cosine y0 plus, I'll do that, cosine, oops, cosine x0 times cosine y0 times xx minus x0 minus sine x0 times sine y0 times yy minus y0. And hopefully I didn't make too many mistakes and we'll find out in just a minute. So let me go ahead and um, uh, replot this one. And then come back here and I use the old handy hold on and x, x, y, y, and f1. So here comes our linear version. Now it's a little hard to see what's going on there. So what we'll do is we'll stretch this out and we'll put a point on it at about where we think it should be. Okay, so there's x equal 1.14 should be about 1, 1, 
would be close enough. So I'm going to move it down here. And it should not be at negative 0.78, but instead at plus 0.78. So I need to get all the way over onto the other side of that hump. Basically over here somewhere. To get to there, I'm going to rotate this. Uh, okay, hopefully that's not making anyone too seasick, but I just about have it. And grab that point. So I'll come back here. Ooh, I can't quite see it anymore, so I have to rotate it. Oh, I lost my point. It's okay. Here it is. Um, so let's see, we want y of point 0.8 or thereabouts. That's uh, pi over 4. And an x of about 1. So right about there is pretty close. And we can see that that plane, which is our linear function, is just about kissing the nonlinear function right at that point. So I think I just about got it. The interesting thing to note is how poorly that plane approximates the nonlinear function sine x times cosine y if you deviate even a little bit from that point that we linearized about. So if you're out here somewhere, you're way off from the nonlinear function if you're using that plane to approximate it. But in the vicinity of that linear, of that operating point, we do pretty well. So to summarize, uh, there was a brief introduction to Taylor series and two variables, and then we went right into an example, and then we plotted it in MATLAB. So again, this is Gordon Parker from Michigan Tech, and thanks for watching.